Well, the leaves are changing color and the leaves are also starting to fall. Winter is coming upon us in northern Wisconsin here where temperatures can easily get well below zero. And I figured I'd show you guys how I design some aspects of my cargo trailer camper conversion for winterizing it and what I do to get it ready for winter. Let's get this going. At least starting on the outside of the cargo trailer camper conversion here, at least what I like to do is to adjust this jack all the way up as far as possible to tip this cargo trailer camper conversion as much as possible or any camper to that matter. Uh, at least when the snow starts to accumulate, starts to melt, that that water can drain off the backside. And I just jack that up as far as I can go. Now these tire covers I got off Amazon. Check out the link in the description box below. I have a link to these specific tire covers. Um, but what I like to do at least is use a three foot long bungee cord here. Um, these tire covers, they do come with straps. Uh, but they are a pain in the rear end to try and use. I'm just be honest with you, I don't like these straps at all. Uh, so what I've found is just use a bungee cord. It just works a heck of a lot better. And I like to park my tires on green treated uh, two by tens. Uh, I find two by eights are just not wide enough. Uh, go with at least two by ten or two by twelve. Make sure it's green treated so it doesn't rot out. And um, I just park it on the 2x10s and put on my tire covers like so. Uh, by doing it this way with a bungee cord, it's just a lot easier, a lot quicker. And you just wrap this right around the back side. And you just pull this tight. You're done. Now when I purchased this green treated 2x10, I purchased a 10 foot long board. I cut one foot off for the jack for the front tongue and what was left was nine feet. I cut the nine feet in half so I had two boards that are four and a half feet long and this has worked out really good for me. Like I said, make sure it's green treated so it doesn't rot out. And like I mentioned earlier, just make sure you jack this all the way up as high as possible so you can get a nice tilt on the front of this cargo trailer or your camper so that this tilts up, the water drains in the back. As for this hose here, this is our drain line for the kitchen sink. I actually purchased a brass cap here and I just made sure that this was completely drained out and I put my brass cap on, but let's go inside. Now, when I designed this cargo trailer camper conversion, I kept in mind that I want to make this easy for winterizing. And I attached the pump in the water accumulation tank to one piece of plywood. I'm about to show that here in a separate video as I already removed this and I moved it downstairs where it's going to, you know, be above freezing. Um, and you can, you know, obviously leave your pump and your accumulation tank out here and blow out the lines and all that other stuff and fill it up with antifreeze and blah, blah, blah. But I didn't want to do any of that. I wanted to keep it simple, stupid. So I screwed my water pump and my accumulation tank to one piece of plywood with four screws. I could pop off those four screws and use it, remove that as one whole unit. And this just hooks right up to it and I can finger tight, tighten it up and loosen it up when I'm ready to winterize it. And I'm, like I said, I'm gonna show that here in a little bit in a video, but I just obviously make sure I have no water left on my lines and I make sure that my faucet is wide open. And that's it. And it just makes it really, really simple. Um, as for the AC unit, I also designed this, so, uh, and I'll splice the pictures of this when it's completely installed, but, you know, I pop out these uh, three total screws on each side, six total screws. I can remove this cage that's around the AC unit, and I could just slide that whole AC unit. It also, take that inside the house where it's above freezing. Same thing with the refrigerator, I designed that so I can easily pull that in and out. You know, when it comes to you know, refrigerators and AC units, I have a compressor. You know, you'll probably leave it in the camper, but I'm an anal bastard, I can't help it. <laughs> I mean, why leave it in here when it's so easy to add and remove those, especially with this college dorm style fridge, it's not that heavy. I could just uh, take it in and out. Um, but it's just really, really simple. Uh, and I'll show you that here in a little bit, in a separate video. Um, as for aerosol cans, I make sure that those are completely removed. 
there's no pressurized cans or obviously any liquid items. I make sure those are completely out of the uh, camper. Um, also, my Blue Eddy lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, I take those completely out. So the EB3A I took out and the AC180 um, power bank, those are completely out of the camper and it's stored away. And the rest of this is going to stay right here inside the cargo trailer camper conversion. You know, northern woods of Wisconsin here, we can easily see temperatures well below zero. And like I said, I might be a little anal when it comes to the refrigerator and the AC unit, but it really doesn't take that long to do if you design it the correct way to make sure you can add, easily add and remove those items out of your camper. All right, so I'm in the basement here and just showing you my water pump board that's easily removable out of the cargo trailer camper conversion. You know, I thought it would be smart to at least put the pump and the water accumulation tank on one piece of plywood here. I got four total screws. I just popped those off and removed this whole board to take it downstairs during the winter. So any residual uh, water that might happen to be in the accumulation tank or maybe in this water filter, that this doesn't freeze and expand and contract and break some of these fittings and this filter here. I just think it's a smart idea. And it, you know, pop four screws, take it out of the cargo trailer camper conversion. It literally takes one minute and you're done. Uh, here is the AC unit. You know, I designed this and I'll splice some pictures of this, at, you know, to show you what it looks like when it's installed. Um, but it's really easy. And I designed this so I could just slide it out and put it downstairs during the winter. And he probably wouldn't need to do this, um, but I'm an anal bastard. I can't help it. <laughs> and I figured, you know, Wisconsin temperatures can easily dip below zero. It probably wouldn't hurt just to keep this down uh, in the basement where it's nice and warm. As for the refrigerator here, you can see we got this cracked, uh, cracked open. So, you know, uh, mold and fungus doesn't build up inside that refrigerator. I think that's a very smart thing to do. Um, also for our water jugs and the tubes that go down into the water jugs, you know, we got those out in the open. So no, you know, mold, fungus, you name it, can, you know, start building up into these tanks, especially being that we drink out of these tanks. We got them uh, tipped upside down so they can uh, air dry. So I think it's just really smart, something to do and get this downstairs so we don't have to worry about this you know in negative temperatures getting damaged and fungus starting to grow inside these tanks well that's about it that's all i do to winterize my cargo trailer camper conversion and if you design your cargo trailer camper conversion with this stuff in mind it will make it a heck of a lot easier before that snow starts to fly well, I hope some of you guys find this uh, useful. You maybe picked up a few tricks here and there. And if you did scratch my back, I'll continue to scratch your back with these videos by knowing subscribe, like, and share. And I'll see you guys in the next video.